There is that which is able to create a supply for your every need. The Word of God and the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, who helps us represent God's fullness on earth. In true intimacy, partnership, and fellowship with Him. Be a part of this and join us as the servant of God, Apostle Joshua Stelman, brings to you the Word of God with simplicity and power. Lift your hands and say, Father, thank you for tonight. I know you will do something in my life that has never been done before. Oh, bless him because his presence is in this place. Manda grasta balakapo. Zipa kumbria sta baladaba korata kresti bala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible says I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified lift your hands and say Lord let your word come tonight to set me free to deliver me to prosper me to enlighten me that I will rule in the day and rule in the night. That I will be a true ambassador of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's great to have everyone around this night. Good evening. Just walk up to ten people. Give them a big hug. Tell them it's good to have you around. Hallelujah. Why are you in a hurry to sit down tonight? Hallelujah. Don't worry, I understand. It's the revelation that you are seated with Christ. Hallelujah. Can we worship God for just two minutes? <laughs> Nina Kawo Yabo Serkin Salama Kene Serkin Salama Serkin
tonight Lord we declare that you are the king of peace the prince of peace you have come to bless us tonight let your word bless us in the name of Jesus hallelujah God bless you please be seated Hallelujah. The Bible says in His presence there is fullness of joy and pleasures at His right hand forevermore. Tonight I'll be teaching on something that I believe will change your life. Hallelujah. I know that every message that comes here is very powerful. But tonight... I want to share with you something very personal and I believe it will bless you. Hallelujah. I, when God told me about this message, I didn't know what to call it. And then I had a dream this morning and I saw the title, Commanding Results. I didn't write it, I saw it. I want to share with you something powerful tonight, if you will believe. Hmm. Make champions out of this message, my father. You see, many of you, when you hear the word like this, you just think it's a caption to motivate you. No, no. To the extent that I lacked what message would encapsulate, what title. And I said, Lord, you have to help me. And while I slept... In the night, I just saw it. Call it commanding results. Hallelujah. What makes certain people to move in levels of results? Levels of power, the manifestations of the word of God. What makes certain ministries prosper and increase? What makes certain individuals look like angels and gods upon the earth? Hallelujah. What makes others very blessed and prosperous? What makes others influential and command such degree of power and grace from the throne? Commanding results. Never forget this message for the rest of your life. Please, final year students, open up your ears, your heart, your spirit, your life. And receive this message tonight. Oh, 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 oh. seen with our eyes the manifestations of your word the ancient have told us that this was the secret of the power that commanded authority in their time tonight Lord as we explore this ancient book I pray that the potency of your power will be made manifest in our lives Lord, I pray that we will not 
disregard this revelation tonight. I pray that we will believe it. We will respect it. We will obey it. And Lord, we are sure that you will perform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Say in the name of Jesus. The word of God is making me a sign and a wonder. Like the ancients of old. The generals of old. The mighty men of old. I am making history by the power of the word. I believe it. I respect it. In Jesus name. Matthew 21. start reading from verse 18. Matthew 21. If you are there, say Amen. Amen. Now in the morning as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Say he was hungry. So the first thing we see in this chapter is that there is hunger. Hallelujah. And when he saw a fig tree along the way, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. Say after me, but leaves. Hmm. Only. And said to it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. The Bible says Jesus was walking and then he saw a tree because he was hungry. Hallelujah. So every hungry man is satisfied when he eats of the fruit of a tree. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says that Jesus saw a tree from afar. It looked wonderful, green. And Jesus came to it and found out that it had only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. Only leaves and no fruit. And he was angry. It didn't look like he loved that tree. Because he cursed the tree out of anger. He said, let no fruit come out of you again. Why do you keep deceiving people as though you are a tree that is blossoming? And you make hungry people come to you only to find out that there are only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. Okay, thank you. I am sure that Jesus was not the only one who had been deceived by that tree. That tree had a track record of deceiving many people by looking so green Hallelujah. And every hungry person that was passing would see that tree and believe that that tree would satisfy its hunger. And the Bible says when Jesus came close, he thought the leaves were in, the fruit was inside and he pushed the evergreen leaves. No fruit. What kind of tragedy is this that a tree can grow to a full size, have, I mean, uh, leaves all over and then there is no fruit. And Jesus caused it in anger. Hallelujah. That tree reminds me of many lives and many believers. We look anointed. We talk anointed. We act anointed. Hallelujah. Reminds me of many ministries. Reminds me of many men of God. Many pastors and apostles and prophets. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reminds me of all kinds of people. Many leaders. They look like they are green. They look attractive. Hallelujah. And then you come near only to find out that there is no food. That can satisfy the hunger of people. You will be blessed tonight. Oh. You will be blessed tonight. That's a contrast because you see. Jesus never said he is glorified when you have leaves. John 15 verse 8. He says, Herein is the Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. This is what brings glory to the Father. Not that you become green. Hallelujah. 
Not that you just become green and blossom, but you bear fruit. Hallelujah. Because when the hungry come, they are looking. The Bible says Jesus was hungry. If you were not hungry, nothing will make him to look for a tree. Because he was passing and he was hungry. And then he saw a tree that attracted him by the leaves. And he came to the tree only to be surprised that there was no fruit. Say, I will bear fruit. Much fruit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so why are certain lives like this? You find out that there is no fruit whatsoever. Listen to me. If you have been serving the Lord for years and years and there is nothing in your life as a sign of a fruit, something is wrong. The end of faith is a performance and a manifestation. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed. He said, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work, he is able to perform it to the end. So, the life of a Christian, eventually in your journey, some fruit should begin to manifest that can attest to the fact that you are planted. Psalms 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. How are we sure he meditates day and night? Because eventually he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. Other trees receive their nourishment from the rain, but this guy receives his own from under. He is planted by the rivers. As a result, he yields his fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither. But the Bible tells us that we see someone mimicking that blessed man with only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. The Bible says he shall be compared to a tree that is planted how will men who are afar because they may not see the river that he's planted close to so how will they see he will yield his fruit in season yes we agree that okay it takes a while for a believer to crystallize the word of god and believe it and absorb it but eventually there should be a sign the bible says and elijah prayed and he told his servant, go and check. He went. He said, there is no sign. And he prayed. At the seventh time, there was a sign. There will always be a sign that lets us know whether you are growing. Whether you are commanding power and authority. If it is the real tongues you have been praying for years, something in your life, there should be a signature upon your life that there is progress. Are you listening to me? If the Bible says the word of God is able to make you wise and you have truly been meditating on that word, eventually we should see the fruits of divine wisdom. Are you listening to me? The Bible promises us certain things as believers when we walk in the Lord. If you have been walking and living by the word truly, a time must come when men can testify and say there is an evidence say after me evidence there must be an evidence noah told men that god told him that rain was coming true or false it took a long time but eventually the bible says that god vindicated him abraham was a man who trusted god and even when he was 75 years Hallelujah. A promise was made to him. And he waited 25 years for that promise. But eventually, the end of faith is a performance. If you, if you have put your trust and your faith in the word of God, eventually, there must be a performance. Every area of your life cannot be a barren land forever. Are you listening to me? If one area of your life is receiving results, it's a sign that the other area will come. So God will encourage you. 
If academically you are not doing well, spiritually you are not doing well, health wise you are not doing well, suddenly when you begin to find out that the anointing of the Spirit is at work in you, what does it tell you? It means fruit is already being produced. Is that correct? And it will motivate you to begin to trust His word in other areas. But where every of your life is a dead, a barren wilderness, something is wrong. Are you listening to me? There are many churches and many people that have given excuses forever. They pray more than anybody else. They fast more than anybody else. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of devotional circulating in town. But I want to ask you a question tonight. How long do you want to watch the leaves on your tree? When will that leaf begin to translate into fruit? That the hungry can come and begin to eat. Because, you see, it is deceit. Jesus saw a tree and was attracted. And when he came to the tree, he just found leaves. And there was no fruit. And he was angry. And he cursed the tree. He said, may fruit never come out of you again. Hallelujah. Two secrets tonight. Number one. You want to command results in your life. Number one, you must have absolute faith in God. Absolute faith in God. Demonstrated by total obedience. Absolute faith. Don't just write faith in God. Absolute faith in God. Absolute faith in the word of God. Demonstrated by total obedience. Unwavering obedience. Hmm. Absolute faith. That you believe that God is faithful and that God is able. The thousands of promises that are scattered in this Bible, God cannot be joking with you. Hallelujah. Absolute faith. Listen, we have ended up complicating Christianity. But do you know, I, I noticed that most of the people that shook their generation, most of them were not even educated people. They took the Bible. Smith Wigglesworth, he was a cobbler. His wife was even the woman of God. And he just found in his Bible, John 14 verse 12. Hallelujah. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou, let's read it. John 14. Absolute faith. I found out that what most believers have is hope, not faith. Many believers hope in God. They don't have faith in God. They just hope that one day in the sweet by and by, Verse 12, John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, who is speaking here? This is Jesus Christ. The works that I do, he shall also do. And greater works, say greater works, and greater works shall he do. This is Jesus Christ talking here. Not an angel. If he sent a prophet, would have said, oh, the prophet didn't hear well. Are you listening to me? Jesus himself said this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes. And Smith Wigglesworth found this and said, Lord, are you serious about this? That an uneducated person like me, if I can believe, if I can believe, and God said, yes. Catherine Kuhlman found this. Amphi McPherson found this. Generals of old found this. Verily, verily. He that believes. Not he that is born again. Not he that is praying in tongues. He that believes. Absolute trust. The works that I do. The works that I do. He shall also do. He said, and greater works greater works. 
many people have tried to give every kind of carnal interpretation. Brother, greater means greater. You went to school. Greater means greater. Greater works. That means if you are not seeing greater works, what is the diagnosis? You do not believe. Now, let me tell you something. When it comes to spiritual growth, you have to apply a lot of humility because the word of God has a way of flogging you and embarrassing you. When I was studying this scripture, I said, Lord, does that mean I don't believe in you? God said, simple, to the degree to which you are seeing my works. And I knew I had to accept it. Because brothers and sisters, I have seen a mystery in our world that is not everything that is impossible for everybody. There are some people, some things are possible for are you listening to me there are some people standing and praying oh lord bring a boat and then we see others get on that water and begin to move the fact that there is one person doing what you are not doing it kills the excuse that is god that is responsible are you listening to me? He that believes in me. The works. I remember one of the first times I read this scripture. I was studying Pastor Chris's message and Kenyon on faith. We were going to prepare for crusade. Never had that experience. We didn't know what to expect. But we took this word and said, Lord, this is true. How many of you truly believe in God? How many of you believe in God? Let me tell you something. Ejimi did something that touched me. I remember during his mother's um, burial. He just came out and laughed. And said. Those who didn't even affect them. They just sat down and were looking. And he said God loaned them the mother for a number of years. And he was so happy. And they kept saying, God is faithful and I move forward. There are, listen, there are many of you who have been sitting, grumbling, shouting at God, saying, God, you are not true. Do you know you are one over how many people who are saying God is faithful? If you say God is not faithful, there are angels whose voices are louder than your own. They, it will overshadow your own belief in an instant. One word, holy. Are you listening to me? Do you believe God's word? Many of you have been reading your Bible. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There are many pastors, there are many ministries who only open the Bible because they are looking for messages to preach to people. They don't believe. It's easy to stand and wear suit and make noise on Sunday or on Wednesday or on Friday or whatever the meeting days are. There are many leaders who truly do not believe the word of God. Tonight I'm asking you, do you believe the word of God? Do you believe that Jesus Christ and all the promises that he has put in the word for you, can you take it with childlike simplicity and say, Lord, I believe. Do you believe Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that says the thoughts I think towards you there are many of you from the time you got to final year. Your fear is a direct sign that you don't believe God. Whatever I fear in my life, the faith and the revelation of God's word has not entered there. Because perfect love casts out fear. So if you are afraid of the future, let me assure you that the revelation of God's word that secures your future has not entered you yet. Are you listening to me? Absolute trust. Father Abraham and the generals of old, these guys believed God and there was a performance. And we began to see the fruit and the manifestation of that faith. You came to ABU and you believed God that you will be a success. Then your first result, 1.5. Seven carryovers. Hey, hey, God, you said this, boy. You just said, Lord, I believe you. You just said, Lord, I believe you. You just said, no matter what, Lord, your word is true. 
And I know that this is not over. Hallelujah. Your uncle promised you that he's going to be blessing you. Suddenly your uncle said, I've changed my mind. He said, ah, but uncle, he said, the only constant thing in life is change. I have changed my mind. And suddenly fear grips you. I tell you, friends, fear is an indication that the word of God has not crystallized in that area in your life. For when the word of God truly comes, it drives out fear. Say, I refuse to fear. There are so many believers living in the world. We confess God's word. We believe God's word in quotes. But then, the sign that we have not believed is we are still afraid. And then there is no performance in our lives. Those who command results. There are many of you that believe you are carrying the healing anointing. You have not prayed for one sick body because you are afraid of embarrassment. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. Hallelujah. I have a passion to get you to a point where you believe the word of God. Because the Bible says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. I challenge myself every time I say, Lord, why am I seeing that I, I, I was doing a Bible study with someone yesterday day before okay yesterday I think Sandra yes we're having Bible study and we were talking about the life the ministry of Jesus Christ and tears filled my eyes while I was talking because I couldn't deny the fact that my life was far from the Jesus life that I saw this guy was a man of faith nothing moved him he believed the father he believed the word he had such audacity he commanded results believe us what is wrong with us hallelujah i tell you the truth it's easy to feel like you are trying and i understand you are doing your best but it does not negate the fact that this revelation has not yet entered us because when the word enters you, I tell you there is a performance. I will die believing this thing I'm sharing with you. How much of God do you believe? Many of us have our spiritual life. Then we have our normal life. The one that works with wisdom. Let's be wise. Let's reason now. Don't be stupid. So you, we make bold claims. But when we step out there, there are all kinds of fears. And we begin to patch the word of God and, and manifest auxiliary faith. The Lord is asking you a question tonight. Do you have absolute faith in Him? Hallelujah. I don't know if I can answer and say, Lord, I have absolute faith in you. Maybe I can say I have faith. But it may not be absolute. Because I know what absolute faith has done in my Bible. I've read my Bible very well. And men who had absolute faith, they rose beyond limitations and shook their generation. They had no internet. Are you listening to me? No people that produce posters. Look at the life of Jesus for instance. The Bible says in the book of Mark, that Jesus was in a room and he said the whole city came and gathered in front of the room. What, what kind of result will a man command like this? There are all kinds of excuses we keep giving ourselves. Read the Bible. The, see, the secret of ENI is found in Mark 1, 2, 3. Go and read it. The Bible says Jesus went to Capernaum there multitudes heard about him and they came jesus went to the desert the same multitudes came jesus went by the seaside the same multitudes came jesus climbed the mountain the same multitudes came same result same power he casted out devils he healed the sick he preached the word he touched the word the performance look at me all of you look up if you were to suddenly see the vision of Jesus Christ 
the real Jesus. And he stood here. And Jesus suddenly made an announcement and said, I am giving you 10 minutes. The first 10 people who come to me, whatever their needs are, it will be met. How many of you will check your withon before coming? Why are you not doing that to me? Simple. I, you, you do not yet trust that my level of competence has gotten to that place. Are you listening to me? If you are hungry for God, you have to get the truth and press to it. I assure you, listen to me, brothers and sisters. If Jesus Christ walked here right now, before you finish, the ministers will gap you because they will fly on his leg and say, Jesus, you don't know how I've waited. I already have my list. I'm not about to write. And you just drop it. Every time people heard about Jesus, they started laughing. You know why? They knew the result had come. They just started laughing. Their own issue was to get to see him. But your issue is not to see me. Your issue is, at, is to ascertain. Lord, now that I've seen Joshua, help him. Let there be grace that is available this night. To at least be able to meet some of my needs. I tell you, you don't know how it pains me when people come up here and say, I wrote seven prayer points in a miracle service. Two have been answered. In my mind, I say, okay. Seven minus two is what? Help me. Seven minus two is what? If you drop your prayer point directly to the person Christ, how many will be met? Tell me, how many will be met? This is the kind of hunger and honesty that will drive you to the anointing. I refuse to give excuses. It simply means there is a light that I have not seen. There is a depth of anointing I have not stepped into. There is a dimension of the operation of the spirit that I have not gotten to yet. That's why whether you say Apostle Josh, Bishop Josh, I won't be misled with all of those nonsense. There is work to be done. Are you listening to me? Those of you who are already confident, I'm laying hands on three people. I'm laying hands on five people. You stopped reading your Bible, that's why. Pick up your Bible and read it again and be ashamed of your pride. And find out that there is work to be done. I tell you, if ministers knew this, the Bible would be the best tool that they will have. I refuse to give excuses. Are you listening to me? That my life will make such a mark. See, we have dwelt in this unbelief to a point that when anybody is exceptional, people say, this guy is not real. Oh, be careful. This Joshua Selman guy is not real. I'm warning you now. Tomorrow, don't say it's any kind of thing. Because people are so complacent. The average pastor, there are three things that many men of God are looking for and they'll be satisfied in ministry. One, to have a crowd. Two, to at least be able to say something from this Bible. It doesn't matter what it is. Number three, and then let there be at least just one person who will fall. They say, you think I'm playing? Oh, what a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Is that what you think will shake the world? That's not uncommon enough. We are talking about commanding authority over territories. One miracle that, let me tell you something. In the days of the generals, all newspapers was about the generals and the fearful miracles they did. Right now, when last, the man must pay for advert. If you see advert in the newspaper, he paid for it. To say, okay, my program is around, please just check. Are you listening to me? There are some people in Zaria that have never even heard that there is anything called koinonia. What are we boasting for? Hmm. Look at Elijah. He stands somewhere. The whole city, the whole city didn't hear him. He just said there shall not be rain. The whiplash of drought started making people find out who is responsible for this. I say, one guy, Elijah, one man like this. And the gist started spreading. Elijah, 
who is he? They said, go and look for him now. And the king says, because the king's ego is, is spoiled, he's embarrassed. He says, go and catch that man. Fifty people march and stand and Elijah is taking fresh air on the mountain and they interrupt his fellowship. This was a man like you. Are you listening to me? Old covenant for you new creation. Old covenant. Elijah looks and says, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. Right now we have different ways of speaking. When you stand, you say, if I be standing in the authority and moving in the office, the department and the office of the Christ, let it come. Fire doesn't come. You're not getting it. We are just teaching congregations English and vocabulary. We are just having a brilliant and an educated but powerless church. Well, right now there's improvement. Everybody is falling everywhere. Everybody is falling everywhere. Just watch TV. A man of signs and wonders. Before they say anything, people just fall. And that's all you have to show the world. Something is wrong. That's all you have to show the world. That a man just fell down. And then all, now prophecy itself is even him. Come, you are, you are Gladys. You are from the east. Your mother is sick. Your uncle traveled. You are an ABU student. And then the congregation claps. What, what? How? Look, real prophets. This is what they say. There is coming a problem in Zaria, but I stop it. That's a real mandate. That you stand and tell the people what Satan wants to do. And you stop it. The creative power of the spoken word. We just have a group of revelatory people. Even the native doctors can create. They have helped to give you the one to reveal. When are we going to get angry that we are going to begin to command territorial results? Listen. If two dead people, how many? If two dead people rise in Koinonia, I assure you, if you come by 2.30 next Friday, you will stand outside. Critics, look at the Bible. The Bible says people came and filled where Jesus was sitting. Mark chapter 2. And the Bible says others were standing outside. When Jesus saw the fate of the man that they brought, the Bible says the scribes who came early and were seated in front, they said, why are you forgiving his sins? If they came late, they would have been outside. Even then, they rushed and came early for that meeting. Jesus had no nonsense. He climbed the mountain. Brothers and sisters, human beings like you stayed with a man for three days on the mountain. The closest thing to what we are supposed to do is what government officials and politicians are doing. Go to the house of politicians. You will see a man who has five or six children sitting outside. You say, why is he? I'm waiting for his excellency. That's the, it's called hunger. The man has fruits. Where he got it is irrelevant. He shall has fruits. When believers come to church and after one hour, they go, ah, it's not true. I tell you the truth is a sign of lack of true fire. In the days of Amphi McPherson, listen, she had a program called Stretcher Only. Meaning, if you are not sick, you are not invited for that meeting. What is our... The, name the kind of conferences we have right now. Business special. For only the ones that are successful. Only you are not successful, you are not a businessman, walk outside. The people are already successful, pastor. Don't lie. It's not your anointing that is making them successful. These guys suffered in the bowels of time and got their money and then you stand and say receive they have it already somebody is budgeting to buy a car of 5 million he has gotten 4.8 you are speaking speaking what takes two months salary to complete and buy his car if I can speak to you and tomorrow they give you a car I'm a real prophet don't go and meet somebody that's already tried if I meet Pastor Williams, I say, hey, Jeep tomorrow, of course. Common sense tells me he's... Ah. 
Am I challenging you? I know you don't like the message. Sorry you came. You must hear it this night. Koinonia. Where hunger is put in you again. See, a man called St. Patrick. Let me tell you something about St. Patrick. Hallelujah. St. Patrick was such a powerful man. He was a dangerous man. A snake beat in Ireland. A snake beat a, a woman's daughter. And she was crying. And St. Patrick was just meandering around the street. And he saw her. He said, Madam, why are you crying? She said, a snake beat her. He said, a snake beat you. Where? Where did the snake go to? Hallelujah. And they showed him the forest. He entered and searched for the snake. He held it. He said, you and your kind. I banish you from this land. Till today, there's no snake in Ireland. Hallelujah. The king got to hear just about St. Patrick. He said, who is that man? They said, that guy is, we don't even know what to call him. And the king said, what sign will he show me? The king's son died six months. He said, go and call St. Patrick. Six months. They had put him in the grave. When St. Patrick came, true life story, St. Patrick looked. He signed his signature and wrote St. Patrick on the grave. He said, dig it out. That's how they carried that boy out. What are we boasting for? It was St. Patrick that began what you hear in Hubert Angel's channel. Christ in me. Christ beside me. Christ before me. Christ above me. Today we say a man of faith and power and he comes with his big stomach. No revelation. Close heavens. Every kind of thing. He says, well, I was in my hotel room. Or God performed. And we waste people's time telling them the price of suits that we are buying. I'm challenging you tonight. Commanding results. Do you believe in the Lord? There was a monk. They were trying to build their church, a Catholic monk. And I think they made a mistake in the measurement. And then they came and the wood was short. The guy just held the wood and started moving. That's how he drew it and completed it. I tell you the truth. Anthony McPherson will organize programs. The only people invited are those on stretchers. That's a real miracle service, not what we are doing. Charles and Francis Hunter. They work close to some of these dimensions. In a single meeting, they raise 100 wheelchairs. Brothers and sisters, replace all the seats that are in this place. Just imagine in your mind they are wheelchairs. And just move them here. Imagine if everybody here were crippled. This is the kind of service. There are many men of God, if you invite them in a service and they see three people on wheelchair, they just do as if they didn't see I know my God will heal. They are laying hands and will just jump the person. And then you say, what manner of man is Jesus? He made the lame to walk. I wonder what the lame person is singing. And the shadows of Peter. Men lined up in the streets. Because they said, Peter is coming, Peter is coming. And I can imagine a woman, please come from bed. And Peter says, bless you bless you. Suddenly you are hearing shouts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If we have half of that anointing, I will put this thing will be a basket, a bowl, and then you put it, you write my name Joshua, and then my picture will be here. You come and touch it, lick it, put it in your wallet, put it in your purse, bath with the pour water on it and go and bath. Madness! All those things because we do not understand. Women shook their generations. Right now, there are men of God who are on TV but nobody knows them. They air three times a week. As they are saying now, we thank you for this broadcast. You cannot even remember who preached again. The only thing you remember is gloss suit as if they printed it in a, in a 
printing press. Noise. Leaves with no fruit. Hallelujah. Am I challenging you? Because we need to rise. Friends, this is an apostolic generation. You cannot be satisfied with what we are seeing. What we are doing now is joke. I tell you, it's not ministry yet. Archbishop Benson Idahosa, he was driving, okay, they were driving him. An armed robber stopped them. Back, back, stop! The driver was afraid. Idahosa just opened his mouth. He told the person to open the door for him first. He came out, the armed robber, lie down, lie down. He just looked at them. He said, one of three things must happen to you this night. Either you will be paralyzed, you will be blind, or you will die. But one must happen this night. Will Lamb Brothers ever... Spokane was called the cleanest city during the time of John G. Lake. You know the way they admit people in Shika? That's how you come to his hospital. You collect a form. To prove that you had the healing anointing, you will go and bring seven people that you healed. That's how he admits. If you say you are sensing the call of God upon your life, he said, go and bring seven people with what used to happen to them and what you have done. Then he will consider whether you are qualified to be his staff. Can you imagine? That was the yastic. Now everybody, a man with a strong healing anointing. I came all the way, 50 kilometers, to tell you. Your... While they are talking, the demons are saying, now wow. Saying, before, when men were around, there was fire. You know these demons have been around since. They knew the fire upon these men. And they will ask one another, they say, ah, when these guys died, they didn't transfer anything. And all of those men, they were called brother this, brother that. Now you call Joshua Selma an apostle. You know, I fear that name because I just remember Apostle Paul, Apostle Smith Wigglesworth, Apostle John G. Lake, Apostle St. Patrick, Apostle Josh. For where? For where? You won't deceive me. No way. But many of you are already parading sons and daughters say call me pastor this go and sit down go and sit down in one place and gather yourself together and first ask what God has called you to do say in the name of Jesus I believe and yet the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 it says so that they without us that means our generation is still coming. The Bible says this. Do you know before Smith Wigglesworth died? I'll share with you some stories today. Before Smith Wigglesworth died, when he was laying hands on Lester Sumro, he told him something. He said, look, make sure you don't die with your anointing. He said, look for young men that are serious and transfer this anointing to them. And then he laid hands on him and began to prophesy. He said, I see a generation. A generation that what we have done will look like a step out of the cave compared to what they are doing. Apostle Babalola, CAC. You see, there are many denominations today that don't, do not even believe what their founders live for. Apostle Babalola, he was said, listen, he was said that that guy was so powerful. A time came when he was preaching and he started lifting, literally. See, the water that, the concept of holy water came from him. He was thirsty, praying on a mountain. And there was no water and he struck the rock and said, let water come. Men. They are the type you say men to. Not, 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 not the, the, the people who are saying men. We are, we are called, you call us children. Am I challenging you? Do you know Apostle Babalola was moving? There was a council. Now, this one, I attended a pastor's conference by Apostle A.T.B. Williams in Kafanchang. 
Emmanuel Kure's conference and he, and he was saying this. He said that Apostle Babalola, when they wanted to call him, when people said there's a gentle man that had the fire of God, there were certain elders, like seven or eight of them, they said they don't believe he's called. Look at the miracles that this man was doing. They said they are not yet convinced that he has the anointing. In other words, this guy is still a joker, he's playing ministry. All of them prayed and a few said actually they have received confirmation. The elders refused. They say until God speaks to every one of them, one by one, before they were agreed. One day, they were praying together and there was a madman running and disturbing people in the street. And Apostle Babalola just came out from the forest. He was just moving in the city. Not going for a program. No protocol. No mic. He was just meandering around the street. And that guy came out. And people were running. He had matches and was driving people. And then the elders were watching. The Lord told them to watch. And they were watching through the window. And Apostle Baba, when the madman came close to him, he said, but you are not mad now. He collected his matches. He said, sit down here, please. That was how those men confirmed that God really called this guy. Now, how do we confirm that God has called a man? Once you just see a guy that is handsome, he looks like Eliab, you just say, surely. Surely. And see, you see ministers and the body of Christ, there is no pressure whatsoever on us to press for more. You look at a man of God and see that he's absolutely satisfied. You even hear some men of God say, I'm so fulfilled. And he's showing you his watch. I'm so fulfilled. There are sick people coming. There are oppressed people coming. And Jesus caused that victory. He said, because you have deceived me. You made me to come all the way. You made me to do everything I'm doing. And you have been deceiving many like that. Let me tell you, there are many people that God himself would dethrone out of ministry and out of certain places of honor. Because if we keep deceiving God's people and claiming, come for miracle service. Are the people really receiving miracles? Or do we just celebrate one miracle, a fractured hand, God healed? When I was watching what the media people play, I tell you, I, I was happy, but I was angry at the same time. Or a robot healed people to a point that he was tired. They just prayed on a mountain and told people to come and touch it. That's the real me. Now, people drink one gallon of water and nothing happens. They say, drink it. Prophetic water. You drink it. You, you, you. They say, take, come and buy a special. I saw a man of God praying for one woman. The anointing oil is like this, 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 uh, uh, swear, this pure tag bottle. He poured some on her head. Told her to pour some. Hey, what men of God do to people? And ask her to drink everything. That's how she drank in my presence. It was on, on TV. Drank everything. The man said, Yes. If you drink oil like that, you will be sick. You will be very sick. We spend over. 30 minutes trying to minister to one person. Look at Jesus. I will be made clean. Come on. He saw the demons. Go! And they left. What is wrong? Am I? Is the only me that is having this anger. Many of you are saying, I won't be a man of God. Please turn and face these people. Say, I believe the word of God. The second key. Your faith can be seen, friends. The second key. I will share this quickly and we will pray. This is one of the reasons why many people do not gain the anointing to command results. I call it the law of honor. Write it quickly. One day the Lord showed me a scripture. Turn with me to Hebrews 7 verse 1. If you have been sleeping, wake up because your life is about to change. Hebrews. So open your eyes 
Open your ears And then you'll understand That the Lord is here Open your eyes Open your ears And then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Hebrews 7 verse 7. Let me show you. This is one of the biggest secrets of my life. I want to share with you something that will change your life tonight. I tell you, if you believe this, if you believe this, you will be changed forever. Behold, I show you a mystery. Lord, open our eyes. Respect what you are about to hear. <laughs> verse 1. For this Melchizedek, King of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and what? Blessed him. Number two. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Three. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abided a priest continually. Verse 6. But he whose descent is not counted from them, received tithes from Abraham and blessed him of all the promises. Verse 7. Read with me together. One to go. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Read it one more time. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed. Stand up. Please stand up. Just stand up. Pray a prayer in one minute. And say, Lord, my life is about to change as I hear this revelation. I humble myself. Let your word come as light. Please pray this prayer just one minute. Because God is about to change lives right now. God is about to shift levels. Please pray. Oh yes, doors will open forever for certain people. Lord, I pray. I pray. This revelation has changed my life. It has changed the lives of many. I pray that men will be commanders of results. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Look at this. Listen to me. Let me give you certain revelations. Number one. You must realize that in the kingdom of God, listen, listen to me. The anointing is carried in the kingdom of God through human vessels. Are you listening to me? Human vessels are the carriers of God's power, of God's unction, of God's ability. And the Bible says without contradiction. In other words, this one, you can't argue on it. You can't preach another message about it. He said the lesser is blessed of the greater. Abraham is the father of what many people call the Abrahamic covenant. The Bible makes us to understand that the king came, I mean that Abraham came from the slaughter of certain people and he spoiled them. The Bible says he came and he took a tenth of the offering and he blessed one man called Melchizedek. Hallelujah. And the Bible says Melchizedek looked at Abraham and blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham, possessor of the Most High. And Paul is giving us a revelation here, using the life of Melchizedek and Abraham. And he told him, he said, Without contradiction, in the realm of the Spirit, it is only the lesser. Are you listening to me? It's only one who is higher, who has the capacity. Pastor, please come. Who has the capacity to take you and to lift you into his higher place of anointing. Follow me. In the realm of the spirit, listen to me. Only one who is higher than you has the capacity to draw you. And the limit to which he can draw you is the limit of his anointing. No man can draw you above his anointing. Are you listening to me? That's why when God wanted to swear, he looked for one who was higher than him so he could submit to him and say, please help me swear to these people. When he did not find anybody, he said, oh, since I'm the only one, I swear by myself. Are you listening to me? 
powerful principle. Listen, listen. I want to give you the unbeatable secret. The unbeatable secret of the anointing, growing in the anointing and financial prosperity. When you want to rise, you don't sow to people lower than you. They can't lift you. When you get to your wealthy place, this is called charity. Are you listening to me? You sow upwards and then you are called higher. Are you following me now? Without contradiction, it is only the lesser that receives from the greater. Hallelujah. I want to show you the principle of walking in the anointing. I never allow any man who is higher or greater than me do anything in my presence that I can do. For many of you, you have been misled and deceived that you only give that honor to your pastor or your spiritual father and many of you have passed anointings that can set you free but because of the stereotype of ministry it has to be me my pastor my father my this and that listen to me and without contradiction the lesser is empowered and lifted to the realm of the greater When I saw this scripture, I repented from talking about men of God and people. I want to show you why the doors are shut for many people and many ministries and many individuals. Hallelujah. Listen to me. In 2004, I wanted the anointing so badly. I had been seeing the manifestation of God's spirit in my life. And Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. Are you listening to me? Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. I left Zaria and I ran to Joss. The first day, there was a mighty manifestation. Hundreds of thousands of people came. Are you listening to me? The second day, I was angry. You know why? Because I didn't serve in that crusade. I knew that when you honor a man, listen to me. Honor opens the door of any man's anointing. You will never receive of the anointing of a man you dishonor and criticize. Hmm. I went, pastor, listen, for six hours, I was standing in that crusade ground. You know what I was doing? I was looking for what to do. There was nothing to be done. Later on, I saw them pushing people who were sick. I said, beautiful. I said, can I join them? They said, I'm not part of the committee. They trained them. I said, committee or no committee. I came from Zaria with a hunger. I was pushing the people and I was praying in tongues. Nobody knew me then. Without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I pushed the wheelchairs, I stood there. People were packed full. And I stood there. I said, Lord, I honor this servant of yours. I know that this man is great. I didn't give him any seed. But I honored him in my spirit. I said, Lord, I believe this guy is a career of an anointing. I respect it. I believe it. I covet it. When I stood there, Renard Bonke finished preaching. And they, they prayed for people for salvation. They wanted to pray for baptisms. Then, I had not started praying for people for baptism. And I said, Lord, how can one man pray for hundreds of thousands of people and they will receive the Holy Ghost? And I stood. I said, Lord, I believe. And I will never forget Renard Bonke was going to drink water. Suddenly I looked up and for the first time I saw the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I saw a bed that would be as big as this auditorium. Was just hovering around the people. You know his crusades you stand. Suddenly I saw it had silvery wings and the, the Lord just took me to this scripture where Elisha told Elijah if you can see me if you can see me as I'm taking up Suddenly I saw that bed. I thought other people were seeing it. But I realized that I was the only one who was seeing it. Do you know, by the time I finished the encounter with that manifestation of the Holy Spirit, I turned and I found out that I was already back in the stage. I don't know when I turned to face people. And from that day, an anointing came upon my life. There is no one I pray for for the baptism who does not get filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? Many of you have cultivated the attitude 
of dishonoring people. I will never forget one time that I went to go and buy, was it sugar cane or something? And I saw two old women. Many of you will not honor them because they are not your pastor. And I saw the old women. Just 10 or 15 naira. I paid for them. And they said, you know how old women bless. They were speaking. And I didn't hear what they said, but I will never forget one thing one of the women said. He said, forever you will walk on gold. That's what she told me. Are you listening to me? As you see me like this, brothers and sisters, I am a product of many encounters and many anointings. Because I realize everything you have not seen in your life, you have not known how to receive it. Whatever it is that you have not seen in your life, you have not yet known how to receive it. Because it's available. Are you listening to me? Before Charles and Francis Hunter died, when I heard that they died, I cried. You know why I cried? Because I was planning that I was going to go to the U.S. And my plan was that I was going to book two weeks with them. Guess what I wanted to go and do? Not to go and preach for them the way many of you want to do. I wanted to go and scrub their toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks. I wanted to beg them to allow me to scrub the toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks. And without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Are you listening to me? It's a law. Whoever has what you do not have, has the ability to impart it upon you. Whether it's your roommate, whether it's your brother. Listen, there are many barren women who will remain barren because they do not know how to open the doors of destiny. If you are a barren woman, go and find a woman that has given birth and say, Madam, can I please wash your plate? And without controversy, the lesser. They may not pray for you. It's a law that happens automatically. Are you listening to me? See, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 9 verse 1. The Bible tells us something. Because of time, I may not read it. Just write it. Look up, please. I studied my Bible and I saw that this principle was consistent. Do you remember the Bible talks about Solomon? Pastor, please sit down. Hallelujah. The Bible says Solomon was so blessed. He was so wealthy. Is that correct? When his news got round and the queen of Sheba heard about him, the Bible says the queen of Sheba gathered seeds. What did she do? How will you run to a man who is already prosperous and you are carrying seeds? Without controversy, the lesser can bring you into his realm. Cheaply. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says she came and met Solomon. And when she spoke with Solomon, the first thing she did, there's no time. The first thing she did was to acknowledge the fact that Solomon was greater than her. Listen, it is not weakness to realize that somebody is better than you. In this realm, there are people you are better than and there are people who are better than you. The ability to acknowledge them will open up their anointing for you. Are you listening to me? She acknowledged that truly there was no man like Solomon. And guess the next thing she did? She packaged her gifts and she gave Solomon question. How do you bless a man who is already blessed? Are you listening to me? Because he has an anointing that can bring you to his realm. That woman heard of the fame of Solomon and said, "Ah, ah No, no, I need to find out what is going on. And the Bible says she sowed and Solomon gave her everything she needed. That's what the Bible says. Are you listening to me? If your brother or your sister is not married, instead of casting out devils and getting angry, go and find a married couple and look at them. They just got married and say, please, um, I bought a small gift to just bless you. And without controversy, you are fulfilling a law in the spirit. Suddenly, you see yourself walking in the anointing. I used to see Benny Hinn. I loved him so much. I See, honor doesn't just mean you package a seed. 
The Bible says, honor the Lord with your tithes. Many of you have been giving your tithes. That's why the heavens are not open. There is a way you carry it. I'm not talking of being sanctimonious. That you realize that I'm sowing to someone who is richer than me. I'm sowing to someone who is more blessed than me. And he will take me. That's why the Bible says, my God, Paul speaking, shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory. Every time a woman's barrenness is about to finish, God will send a man who is higher than her and say, give him food. What is God doing? The widow of Zarephath. See, the Shunammite woman understood this. The moment she perceived he was a prophet of God, he said, quickly, let us build a place. And without controversy, whatever level you want to get to, there is a career of that anointing working in this earth. The reason is we have not honored them because some of them are your roommates in class. You go to class together but you do not know the difference. Hallelujah. You have been castigating everybody who is married. Instead of sowing... See, let me tell you the truth. I, Everybody I see, every nice car that I see, because I want to buy a car, I just say, Lord, thank you for this car. If my friend buys a car today, I will be the first person to provide fuel for that car. I'm not a fool. I know this principle. Are you listening to me? You see why we are rich? Because we provide free bus transport for you. I don't know the kinds of anointings that are here. And I know that there are some anointings we do not have. So we sow into your anointing by providing bus. Many of you are laughing and wondering why this ministry is increasing. These are the laws. Are you listening to me? Every time I'm around a man of God, when I went to Dr. Akwami's church to minister, it was an honor because he's a father in the land. When I entered, people were there looking at me. Oh, this is the Apostle Joshua. When I went in front of Dr. Akwami, I got down on both of my knees. I don't know him. He's not my spiritual father for some of you who have been misled and misguided with devilish doctrines. And I greeted him. And then I got up. Because without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Are you listening to me? Many of you sit down and watch men of God on TV. And you say, Kai, this man's realm herself is so bad. You have not gotten to where he's getting to. You have three members and you are criticizing him. There are people who criticize me today and criticize us and never walk in the anointing. I tell you, you can listen to all my tapes. The heaven will remain short. That honor is a law. Are you listening to me? Look at the myriads of Nigerians in Abuja and Lagos queuing for jobs. Their yard mate goes to a a lucrative office every day. Why not wake up early in the morning and polish his shoe and keep it for him? You may not understand what you are doing, but you are tapping into a law. I tell you, it will not take two weeks they will call you. Are you listening to me? Respect this principle I'm teaching you. For your information, let me give you a little secret about the prosperity of this ministry. I'm sowing into the life of living faith. I'm sowing into the life of Kenneth Copeland. I'm sowing into the life of Benny Hinn. I'm sowing into the life of Reinhard Bonke. I'm sowing into the life of Kobus van Rensburg. I believe them. When I got up, I went to South Africa. I was fasting. I was praying. I didn't go to show that I'm going abroad. I had serious business there. He was a career of an anointing. Others were discussing and criticizing. I said, Lord, I know there is grace. And I went there Smith Wigglesworth laid his hands on Lester Sumro. Are you listening to me? And Kobus was with Lester Sumro for one week and he laid his hands on me. When I went there, Kobus looked at me. He said, I want to connect you to the lineage of the generals. And he laid his hands on me three times. Sorry for all the people who carry every kind of rubbish news. It's not by age. If you understand the principle, you will rise. Are you listening to me? Listen to me. Hear me. My mother and my father laid their hands and blessed me for ministry. And this is why I can never fail. You don't know the hands and the anointings that are responsible for what you are seeing. Are you listening to me? 
I respect the careers of this anointing. I saw into the lives of blessed people. Mike Mudok, one of my greatest financial mentors. I don't like him. I don't like him. He's a seed seed man. But he carries something I'm looking for. When he came to Koza, I couldn't, I couldn't make it. I was streaming in my room and praying in tongues for six hours, for three, three hours every day, beginning to the end of that program. I prayed for the internet, what I would have paid for my hotel bills. And some of you just get up and say, how are these people we get in the anointing? And all kinds of stories. Hallelujah. Rather than celebrate, when you don't celebrate an anointing, forget about walking in it. I will never allow a man who is greater than me do what I can do for him. I go to a shop to buy something and I see an elderly woman. I, I will over my dead body for that woman to pay that money if I can pay. He mustn't be a pastor. Hallelujah. You want to raise children. You see a woman that raised eight children. All of them are disciplined. There is an anointing. That woman can, you can tap into it. Hallelujah. I see ministries that represent the things I want. Even in the realms of prosperity. I couldn't understand the prosperity on Oedeko's life. I studied this man and read his books. I couldn't find the key. I said, Lord, what kind of thing is this guy? I mean, what is it? I need to see something there. And the Lord told me, one day you are going to sow into his life. The day the Lord told me I went, I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. And I sowed into that anointing. I came out to enter the car and the Lord told me, come out. And I came out. He said, kneel down on that ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands. And the Lord said, from today, everywhere you go, the land will open for you. And people keep criticizing. We go to CGC, it's packed full with people. We come here, packed full, blue roof. See, when you see a man prospering, find out what law is being operated. It's God that oversees his laws. I can't go to a restaurant with somebody that carries something. See, before all my brothers entered into a relationship, when they entered into a relationship, I was concerned. Ask them, Valentine's Day, I was so into it. Many of you are there grumbling and shouting and making noise. My sister is not married. What of me? Don't these guys like me? And you see your roommate who may not be as good looking as you look like. Every time she's cooking. Where are you carrying this food? I'm cooking. I want to sow into an anointing. You are laughing at her. Then you see one clean brother who come out with his prosperity and say she's the one you marry. And you, you see that God, you are not fair. Let me tell you, life will never change until you change it. For those of you who are waiting for things to change, are you listening to me? I'm showing you a law without controversy. The lesser is blessed of the greater. Hallelujah. I spoke to the protocol because we are trusting God for our boss. I told them, they told me that RCF, um, I mean, they were charging us a stipend for the boss. I said, very good. Because I was looking for a way to sow into their life. I'm looking for a boss. We are looking for a boss as a ministry. What do we do? We find a ministry that has what we are looking for and so into it. Many people sit in Zaria here. They are broke. They are poor. Their ministries are broke. But people are running from Abuja, running from everywhere. They come and catch the fire and so into the anointing. I'm not talking of seed. It's the law of honor. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. If you believe this, go and tell your brothers and sisters who are looking for jobs and looking for this and looking for marriage and looking for all of these things. Nothing will change. The Bible says when God saw their faith, faith can be seen. It's hope that cannot be seen. Many people have been doing hope. What they call faith. Sometimes I sit down and I'm watching television. And I watch Benny Hinn. I watch Kobus. I watch all of these people. And I'm kneeling down. We took the leaders, hear me, and all the heads of department. Because Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, they have a level of prosperity and excellence that is touching. You will be a wicked person to deny. Hallelujah. Other people were discussing, who are these people Said, Know this, know that. I told the leaders. Manasseh suggested it. And I said, quickly, 
the heads of departments and the ministers. We went and we lodged in an expensive hotel in Abuja. It wasn't because we wanted to waste money. The lesser is blessed of the greater. When we went there, listen to me, the head of department went to go and meet the head of department there and walked there. The head of protocol went to go and meet them. Why will you be surprised that we are excellent? And without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. I'm showing you a key. I promise you, it will open any door. Every time I am in lack, I find those who are prosperous. Quick! Quick with the remaining money. I don't waste my time sitting. I don't waste my time. No, no! Listen, let me tell you something. Listen to me. Hi, Lord. In John 21, the Bible says, Peter said, I want to show you something. Your skill can fail you. Are you listening to me? It was a time of recession. I was saying, Lord, give me a word for this recession. I've had many preachers and God showed me something. Do you know Peter was a fisherman? Realize that there was a time Jesus told him, go and fish and take the mouth from the coin. That means your potentials and your gift is supposed to bring prosperity. However, there are times it can fail. What law do you engage in when it fails? Let me show you. The Bible says Peter went to fish and found out that there was no fish. Suddenly there was no fish. A fisherman who used to fish all the time, there was no fish. And the Bible says when you went, Jesus saw them. Listen to what Jesus tells them in John 21. He said, children. How many people is Jesus older than among the disciples? He said, children. It was a test of honor. Children, have you caught any fish? They said, no. He said, cast your net. That's your past the test. They would have said, children. Peter said, I'm married. They killed all your age mates from two years and below. I'm not older than you with two years old. How can a man call them children? My mother started calling me her father. I promise you, her poultry and her business just expanded. Hey, could it be that you have been missing something? Could it be that your miracle has been passing you? And you have been praying and hitting keys in the spirit without knowing which door is opening. When my mother came here, that's why quickly, before we said anything, I did what? I called her. I said, speak to this work without controversy. When it was time for her to go back, I packaged a dangerous seed and I went and met her. I may be your son, but this is not the issue of son now. I tapped into that grace quickly. Many of you see careers of anointings that you want. And you just keep looking at them all the time. Mukhtar, his laundry services is doing very well. He's a leader. He finished serving from Engineering Students Fellowship. And he's very good. Let me tell you a little history about this guy. Are you listening to me? For one year, Mukhtar came and was, before he started his business, he was dry cleaning my suit for one year. One solid year as a seed. He knew what he was doing. When you see the worship team and all these people doing what they are doing, they are tapping into graces. There are many of you, you are, your job is to grumble and complain. There are many people that I honor and sow into their lives is not because they are nice people. I look at the weakness of others and get the gold in them. I'm interested in the anointing. When, let me tell you, when I'm watching a man that carries something, I can slap you if you come to, dis, to, to, to disturb me. I don't, I'm not the kind of person that is in church. Before you do it, say, oh, I'm seen. And you are not getting anything. I give my rapt attention. My spirit is open. I'm saying, Lord, the guy, the guy may be joking for 30 minutes. I'm tired of this joke. Show me this key. And you sit down there. There are times I play messages of Benny Hinn. I'm not listening to the message. I just want to saturate under the anointing. And I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. For about one month, that was the song that, that was, it was his worship songs that I slept with all through the night. They will play all through the night. I'm just trying to show you that this is not a mistake. Do you know that if you honor people, final year students, we have started our, our meeting with you tomorrow this night. 
Many of you see the ministers. You just come because they are your colleagues. You just tap them. Ah, edgy, how far? I'm not saying you just lie down and lick people's leg. But I tell you the truth. You can sit down and tap into anointings. I never go and see a man that is higher than me empty handed. No matter what happens, even if it is 10 naira, I must put it in my pocket. And at the end of it, I will bless him. Are you listening to me? I want to show you that there are laws and there are principles that are working. I repented from castigating people and criticizing people. Any grace that I see, I humble myself. I say, Lord, you have empowered these people. Suddenly, sometimes, I listen to the tapes once. Do you know, aside from last week's tape, there is no koinonia message I don't listen to. I can easily say it's my ministry. I download it. I don't ask the media to bring it. I want it to cost me something. I download it. And every time I'm prophesying, or the man of God is prophesying rather, I get down on my knees. God is my witness. I say, Lord, I believe your servant is about to speak a word. I believe the anointing he's carrying. I promise myself that for a long time, nobody will sow into this ministry more than me. It's not because it's my ministry. I believe in the anointing that is carrying. Many of you come and you just sit down and look at people. You see the ushers. You see everybody. God is opening doors for them. You are just smiling and looking and complaining and ranting and shouting and doing all kinds of things. I tell you, friends, if you obey this law, there is nothing that will not work for you. Your father was driven out of the job and his brother is still working. That's the time for him to go and greet his brother. Go and greet his brother and say, Ah, well done, sir. And when they get to filling station, the remaining 4,000 that is left, carry 2,000 inside and say, please get fuel. Insist that they use your money and sow into the anointing that is working. Do you believe this? Or many of you are still saying, is that all? Do you believe this? I tell you the truth. See, let me tell you. If I were some of you seated here, I promise you, I will never allow any anointing pass me by unnoticed. If I wake up in the morning blind, by evening my eyes would have opened. I will find everybody who is seen and clean their shoe. I will just say, I'm sitting with a rag and water and blind. Everybody whose eyes is open, please come and pass. Let me wash your leg. When God wanted men, he sowed his seed into the earth and Jesus gave birth to a harvest that is still happening till now. We are going to pray. I know we have taken time, but I'm showing you a mystery that will open every door for you. Find careers of your anointing. Whether it's, even if it's only once you meet them in your life, they may not be men of God. Some of them may not even be born again. Hallelujah. You sow into the anointings. Every seed that comes into my life, I divide it. And I begin to sow. The tithe of this ministry, every week, each and every week we are sowing it. Many of you have been giving, but you have only been doing charity. You have not been rising. Because you look and say, ah, God tells you, package this seed. Go and sow it into Joshua Selman's life. He said, God, for God forbid. I'm seeing suits like me. I'll go and sow. And you see somebody stand with a plate outside. And he's begging you. And you go and throw 20 naira. You'll be rewarded because you did charity. But that wealthy place, you will not enter it. No way. It's not done that way. Are you listening to me? During miracle service, you are standing. Some of you are frowning and just looking. These people say, why are they always joking? Call my case. Instead of you to come and be praying and say, Lord, part of my prayer request, there is grace. There is grace to receive. You can honor a man even without him knowing and you receive that anointing. Go and see what koinonia messages are doing in Futmina. Go and see the kind, the rip, the miracles and the revival that is happening in Futmina. I, I, I wasn't even aware until someone started giving me stories. I tell you, people catching fire 
But there are some of you who are sitting down here. You hear prophecies that will come and you just laugh. Where I wonder where you think your miracle is coming from. When Paul was going to Damascus and he fell, the Bible says God commanded Ananias. In other words, he recognized he was a carrier of that glory. And Ananias said, Brother Paul, God sent me that I should lay my hands on you, that your eyes be open, and that you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And Paul said, Yes, I've seen it in a vision. And he laid hands on him. Many of you come in every week. You see prosperity. You see excellence. You feel God is calling you into ministry. Every time you see every man of God, you come and talk and look and say, Ah, Jakes, I saw you that day at the faculty. And suddenly the door is closed. You will secretly get his tape and listen to And you find out that the door is not opening. You can't find that key. Are you learning something tonight? Graduates, forget about that nonsense of trying to look for your uncle or auntie. If I were you, and we are going to talk tomorrow by 12, right here. As soon as you finish, go and find somebody that is working. Polish his shoe. While you are polishing, God is calling you into ministry. You prepare, or God told you you will marry a minister. Go and find a bad pastor. William's wife is coming here every week. Every week you are seeing her. After you finish, you say, ah, give me five. You just shake her. And the door closes and you shake empty hands. And somebody can come and say, Lord, if I may but touch the helm of his garment. That's how many of you keep sitting here. People come from other states. Less than 30 minutes, they have caught fire and caught an anointing. Are you getting blessed? I'm not saying you should give me money. I'm blessed. You know that. And without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Every time you see people serving you and sowing into you and you are laughing, say, Kai, that means I'm a big man. You are not wise. You should turn quickly and start finding a way. There is he that scattereth and increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. I can't be a failure in life. No way. Not when there is one career of an anointing. Hallelujah. When Pastor Biodu was going to bring Dr. Miles Munro, do you know what they did? What I mean, um, um, what's his name? The, Mike Mudok. Do you know what they did? One month before he came, they got all his tapes and they made the choir to practice his songs. Say after me, honor. As soon as he was entering his hotel room, a grand piano was there playing the songs he wrote. He announced it on air that in all his life and ministry he has gone around the world. No ministry has honored him like this. The honorarium that they were supposed to give him, they doubled it times three and sold it into his life. There are people who have been in Abuja since 1991. 1991! They don't have their building. When he came into Abuja, he went and met the pastor with the largest church and greeted him. Many of you are there on campus. God called me into ministry. You are foolishly doing things. There are people who have run this race before you. You can't come and greet them. You see them, you just push them. I touch somebody and they fell down. It will tire you. See, now it's not, it's not like before that they tell somebody, no, no, you see, stay back and let go, go, go and do ministry. Hallelujah. While on campus, we were all already in ministry. I tell you, we were men of God. But I served in FCS till I finished. I was a prayer secretary, engineering students fellowship. We were already in ministry, doing great things. Jakes was the president of NACA. Ejimi was QT, QT, uh, uh, he was in QT. Hallelujah. Manasseh was in faculty of arts. He was prayer secretary. Bishop became the prayer secretary after me, right? And then he became the president of engineering students fellowship. Are you listening to me? 
We were ministry, but we knew the power of service and tapping into anointings that was higher than us. From there, I became the National Prayer Secretary of Conference of Nigerian Christian Engineering Students. Then we all were serving. Jakes became the president of some of the people who we got born again. Later became our leaders in FCS. And we still told them, yes sir. We will go to their father's church and preach and come and say yes sir to them. But we are still saying yes sir. Because it was about office, not person. Are you listening to me? So why will you be surprised today that he and I will never lack people who are serving? Are you listening to me? It's a law and it's a principle. After tonight's meeting, we are going to pray two prayer points. The first prayer point is you are going to ask God and say, Lord, I have allowed the careers of my anointing to pass me by without recognizing them. From today, open my eyes to practice the law of honor. I need to begin to work in uncommon results. There are careers. Rise up on your feet. Somebody's life is changing. I tell you. Somebody's life is changing. This is one of the most powerful messages you would have heard in 2012. And without controversy, the lesser I've given you a key tonight. I tell you, it will unlock any door. I don't care what that door is. It will unlock every door. Doors of jobs. Doors of ministry. Doors of business. Doors of power. The Bosco Pekete say, Lord, I repent from dishonoring the careers. It may be your mother, it may be your father, it may be somebody by the roadside, it may be an elderly woman somewhere, an elderly man somewhere, it may be your head of department, it may be people around. Look beyond the man. See an anointing that can take you to a new level. And without controversy, the lesser is empowered, enriched, blessed, lifted, glorified, honored by the greater. Let this key open a door for you. Doors of greatness. Doors of new anointings. Doors of increase. Doors of business. Doors of marriage. Doors of family. Doors of jobs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray. And you are going to prophesy. And say in the name of Jesus, I honor every career of the anointing that I need in my life. You may not meet some of them for the rest of your life, but you can honor them. And it can be recorded in the spirit. It may be your mother. It may be a woman that gave birth to a good, or a woman that has a good husband. You are looking for a good husband. You want a new car. You want a new job. You want promotion. You don't get it by dishonor. Some vessels are unto honor. Some vessels are unto dishonor. If you can recognize this, you are a wise man. You are a wise woman. We are rounding up. Come on, pray. Bataka posatai. Mam preteke pariyadabash. Lord, I serve with my seed. I serve with my time. I serve with good report. In the name of Jesus. I recognize anointings. I respect anointings. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Listen to me. When you look at a man, you may not know when you see a man who is anointed, find out the encounters that brought that man to that level. Are you listening to me? Find out what level of grace someone may come up the podium or he may preach on TV. He may not have the utterance you are looking for. Find out what brought him on TV that you have not yet gone. Somebody may come up here and may be preaching in Hausa and you are having to, they are having to interpret and you laugh and say, this guy cannot preach. You are there seated at the back. The person is there in front. There must be something he carried. I tell you, if you don't recognize this, you can, see, let me tell you, honor is not something you say, I, I did it in my heart. Lie, lie. It's a law. Somebody will do it for you too. So you have to honor. Any man, not just a pastor, whoever carries what you don't carry, respect the sacrifice that brought it and you will see that you are stepping into it. Listen, let me give you a secret. For those of you who are preachers, every time you go to preach in a place and you see someone who is higher than you in the anointing, recognize the grace of God upon that man. The meeting has opened unto you. If you come with arrogance, if I come today and Manasseh is occupying a higher spiritual position than me and I refuse to recognize him, I promise you, you will struggle in that meeting. The heavens will close. I don't care what kind of anointing you carry. These are laws people don't know. No matter who you are, you won't change it. Many of you after now may need to send texts to certain people you have insulted. Careers of your anointing. When they speak, they spit on your face because of how they talk. That's none of your business. You are looking for something. God knows why he didn't put it inside you and put it inside them. Hallelujah. I have a big burden because there are certain kinds of anointings in this house I have not seen in the lives of many people yet. And I know that is because many of you either do not honor it and do not respect it. I'm not talking of lying and rolling on the floor. My greatest, my greatest desire is not to be a superstar Joshua Selman standing. I tell you, my greatest desire is that every one of you, there are many anointings that are for the taking. Many of you don't know how to receive. And let me tell you something. The careers of your anointing are not always within your reach. Every day, the price is more. Every day, the price is more. A day will come, it will cost you more than it's costing you right now. I tell you the truth. There are many people, for instance, with all humility. I, when I used to have a lot of time, you remember those times? We we'll sit down, sometimes some of the ministers were around. But right now, we don't have that luxury. Every day, it keeps moving further. If you don't see it, a time will come, Elijah will move. You are looking, you will not see the chariot. Someone will come from behind and see the chariot and carry a mantle. Hallelujah. Very soon, many generals of God are leaving Zaria. Many of you are the ones who will carry the next fire of revival. In your arrogance and pompousness, you will never look and say there are anointings. What did these people carry that made them shake the campus? What did these people carry in the midst of persecution, in the midst of pain, and say, Lord, would you cause that there be a rain on my life? What keys open the door of prosperity? What keys open the door of influence? Many of you don't know what is bringing people inside and outside. You are busy castigating and say, eh, crowd does not matter. Instead of you to say, Lord, there is a key. Once upon a time, these people were not there. What brought them? The train is moving. And for those who can see, you can catch something and ride on it. Kaposa Tabala. Without controversy, the lesser. I tell you a secret of commanding results. You will command results. God put results on earth to be reproduced, not to be stood with one man. He who has an ear tonight, let him hear. Hallelujah.
believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, call 081-38-325463 or 0033-508735 or 0034-003936. You can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Parenting Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore KNI You can also download our messages on www.forshare.com Parenting Network International duplicating the fullness of God's life and earth